Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Nahmadu wa nusalli ala Rasul al-Kareem. Amma abad. A'udhu billahi min shaytan ar-Rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina azab al-nar. Alhamdulillah, Imam Ghazali rahimahullah ta'ala was giving us a a practical way outlined for us to live our lives as Muslims and practicing what we learn and to actually practical steps to attach ourselves with the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who have been here for the last few weeks have seen how he told us to divide our time up in the morning into four things. And then actually after sunrise he was giving us ways in which we should spend our day. Ways in which we should spend our day. Now, last week everyone was given one of these as a checklist for uh, to see if we're actually holding to what we've been studying. So if everyone could uh, bring those out. No? Okay. Well, I gave you another one for this week. Inshallah, we try to stick to it. I'll do my best too. That one wasn't finished? Oh, the old one went to the fifth? Oh, okay, great, great, okay. I'm sorry, I, 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 I didn't notice that. Okay. Yes? What are we defining as the difference between a supplication and a thicker? Okay, the, a good, good question. The supplications were either the, the, the prayers... The prayers that he mentioned we should read, uh, like, no, no, those are the dhikr, actually. Yes, those are the dhikr. Page 48. The, 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 the supplication is like page 40, what page was 41. 41, yes, exactly. Uh, 40 in the English. But, you know what I, I suggest, inshallah? For us that aren't acquainted with the Arabic, we should spend maybe 10 to 15 minutes in dua of our own dua. Our begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our own needs. 10 10 to 15 minutes just in our uh, begging of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But those who can do these dua, they do the dua for however much time, however much they can do. So two things. That's a very good question. The dhikr are those adhkar that Imam Ghazali rahimullah told us on page 40. Eight. Forty-eight. Those are the dhikr that is for uh, line two. Line one is either the adi'iyah, the supplications taught on page 41, or your own dua. Your own dua. Okay? So th- that's what that is, inshallah. But again, uh, this will keep us seeing how much we're actually doing and what we're falling short on. Uh, and it keeps us striving to become better. So keep up with this. Keep up with this, inshallah. So now, Imam Ghazali, we went through on page 52. Imam Ghazali here told us, very beautiful, very beautifully, he told us that the most beneficial and best way to spend your day would be seeking beneficial knowledge. Learning about what is good for the soul, what is bad for the soul. Uh, learning what diseases of the heart there are, learning things about the Prophet ﷺ, S- spending time in beneficial knowledge. That is the best thing you could do in your day. But also, we need to look at one thing which we ended on last night, uh, last night, last class, which was um, at the bottom of 52, where it says, فَإِنْ دَعَتْكَ نَفْسُكَ إِلَىٰ تَرْكِ مَا ذَكَرْنَاهُ مِنْ أَوْرَادِ وَالْأَذْكَارِ إِشْتِغَالًا بِذَالِكَ He says here, however, if your lower self, your nafs, your nafs, if your lower self asks you to leave off the dua, the dhikr, and all of these things, due to your occupation, with, your, with these duties, yani, with learning. If your nafs tells you, no, I want to learn, I want to learn, and you don't feel like doing the dhikr, doing the dua, 
Then what does he tell us? فَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ الْلَعِينَ قَدَ دَسَّ إِلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ الدَّاءَ الدَّافِينَ That then know, then know that Satan the accursed has injected into your heart the hidden illness of love, of prestige and wealth. فَإِيَّاكَ أَن تَغْتَرَّ بِهِ فَتَكُونَ ذُحْكَةً لَهُ فَيُحْلِكْ ثُمَّ يَسْخَرَّ Minka. Beware of being deceived by this, becoming a laughing stock of, for him and being brought to destruction after which he will mock you. So now the ne- what he's trying to tell us here is the whole object- objective of everything we learn in these two hours is for the closeness of Allah. All the ilm and knowledge we learn in these classes is for the sake of Allah. And in the beginning we talked about the importance of having the niyyah. That what I'm doing is only for Allah, not to show off to anyone that I learned this book or anything. So if your nafs is saying, let's keep studying, don't worry about the dhikr, the remembrance of Allah, don't worry about the dua, we'll do that later, later, later. Then know that shaitan's playing with you. Because the whole objective of what we learn is that we get close to Allah and there's no better way to get close to Allah than actually doing the dhikr and the dua and these things. Okay, so how do you fight with that? You just, you, you see this? Yeah. You make it last, you make it wajib upon yourself. I will check both of these every day. Schedule, stick to the schedule. Stick to the schedule. Good question. The brother said, how do we fight that? That's what this is for. If you don't do this, you're going to get lazy. Very lazy. Because you believe in that you're doing something good. Because you believe, very good. Why is he saying it's a trick of shaitan? You feel like I'm doing good. Oh, I'm reading, I'm reading Aqidah today. Let me learn my Aqidah. You're not doing any dhikr. You're not doing any dua. But I'm learning Aqidah. Alhamdulillah. I'm learning a lot now. But you're not doing the main thing. Shaitan is playing with you. So what he's saying here, what he's saying here is, if you, now let's look at the next, the next paragraph. وَإِنْ جَرَّبْتَ نَفْسَكَ مُدَّةً فِي الْأَوْرَادِ وَالْعِبَادَاتِ وَكَانْ لَا تَثْقِلُهَا كَسْلًا عَنْهَا وَلَكِنْ ظَهَرَتْ رَغْبَتُكَ فِي تَحْسِيلِ الْإِلْمِ النَّافِعِ وَلَمْ تَرِدْبِهِ إِلَّا وَجْهَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَالدَّارِ الْآخِرَةِ فَذَارِكَ أَفْضَلْ مِنْ نَوَافِلِ الْعِبَادَاتِ So he says, listen to this. If you try the routine, this, if you try your routine, of dua and worship for some time and yourself doesn't find it burdensome you are able to actually check all four every day or become negligent of it but rather your learning for a, uh, your yearning for attaining beneficial knowledge becomes apparent and you want it only for the sake of Allah then seeking this knowledge is better than voluntary works so what he's saying now first thing is this Connect yourself directly with the dhikr and the worship of Allah. If after you connect yourself with the dhikr and making dua to Allah, then you still have that desire to learn, now you learn. Now you learn. Okay? Let me explain to you what, what my personal experience. Maybe somebody may not be telling you the same thing. I started this one. I started in Quran. Yeah. Okay? Now I have in my mind, I don't just want to anymore just read the Quran not knowing what I yeah. read. So I started in a, in a translation. Yeah. And after translation, I go into tafsir. And, I, and as, as a uh, Maulana Mududi. Okay, and let I me explain page something. After page after page after page. I'm going Good point. To... Good point. I think this is directly talking about what you're going through. I think that Imam Ghazali is, is exactly explaining what you just went through. Because listen, we have to understand this. Reading Quran is ibadah. Not all of Quran is understood. Alif la mim starts off where you cannot understand. It starts off where you don't understand. To let you know where you're at. There's no tafsir for alif la mim. Exactly. Reading Quran is an ibadah. With understanding and without understanding. Do the ibadah. When you're done with your ibadah, then go to learning other knowledge. What shaitan did there was say, don't worry about ibadah. Go straight to knowledge now. Learn tafsir. Become a mufassir. 
Imam Ghazali just went directly against that. He said, no, if you're... <laughs> exactly what he said. If your naf tells you, let's go learn more and more and more, and doesn't feel like doing all of these things, no, then shaitan got you. Do you get what I'm saying? So, it, 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 it's, it's very important. Shaitan getting me every day. <laughs> That's why we're reading this, and he's teaching us these tricks. He's teaching us these tricks that are used. So do the dhikr, do the ibadah of Allah, and then after that, we go to learning more and more. So let's continue. Yeah, but then after that, I feel good that I did everything. I don't need to do anything. <laughs> let's go forward. He's still out there. He's still out there. Still out there. Let, let, let's continue, inshallah. <laughs> then what does he say now? He says, as long as the intention is sound. This is the main thing. Your niyyah has to be pure. The matter, the matter hinges on the soundness of intention. Whatever we're doing, it only matters how much intention we have. For if it is sound, it is the source. For if it is not sound, it is the source of the deception of the ignorant and the place where men's feet slip. So the main thing, the main thing is our intention when we're learning. Now, Imam Ghazali, rahimahullah, is going to the second level of things you should spend your day doing. Second level. Let's go to the next one. Al-Thani. Al-Ibadah. Al-Halatu Thaniya. Alla taqdira ala tahseel al-ilm al-nafi' Walakin tashtaghilu bi wadha'if al-ibadat min al-dhikri wal-qirati wal-tasbihat wal-salawat فَذَٰلِكَ مِنْ دَرَجَاتِ الْعَابِدِينَ وَسِيَرِ الصَّالِحِينَ وَتَكُونُ بِذَٰلِكَ أَيْذًا مِنَ الْفَائِزِينَ Listen to this. If you are unable to acquire useful knowledge, you can't spend all of your time just studying and reading, but spend your time engaged in the duties of worship, such as remembrance of Allah, recitation of the Qur'an, glorification, you know, tasbih, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, and extra prayers, this is among the stations of the worshippers and the ways of the righteous. And by this method, you will also be of the successful ones. So now, Imam Ghazali tells us, if you cannot spend your time just learning, 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 a lot of people don't have that uh, talab, that desire just to spend their time learning. He's saying that's okay. The next station also is of those who are successful. And successful who are those who do what? Now they spend their time in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, please let me know if you covered this, but what proof does he give that seeking useful knowledge should come before acts of worship? Seeking useful knowledge? Mm -hmm. Why is that, you know, the preferred way to spend time rather than... Because, uh, we didn't go over this already, but the reason is because your knowledge, your, your action can never be accepted unless it's done in the proper form. And if you don't have knowledge on how to do it, then that action will never be acceptable. So it's, it's based on the concept that um, the knowledge of something precedes the action. I don't know any specific dalil, but for any action, say one of us wants to pray nafl, ibadah, correct? What does he say here? Spend our time doing nawafil, second level, ibadah. If you did not sit in the class and learn that you cannot pray at the time of zawal, what will happen? We learned, exactly, you, we learned about praying uh, after fajr time begins and until the prayer starts. What can and can't you do in between that time? No nuffle no prayer, except for two sunnahs. two sunnahs. If you do not learn, all of our actions are based on this knowledge. So if you don't learn first, how will you ever do the action correctly? You may be spending, and that's why, that's why the hadith and the saying is that the virtue of one scholar is more than a thousand worshippers. The, vir the virtue of one scholar is more than a thousand worshippers. Because those thousand worshippers may spend their time worshipping, 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 and not know they're doing something wrong. 
So it's for that reason that primarily what we have to do is spend our time learning. Learn and then apply that uh, uh, on a practical level. Okay? So now what is he saying here? If you are not able to acquire useful knowledge, and one more thing that we explained, that nowadays uh, it's not practical for us to devote ourselves to only one of these four things. Now what we have to do is try our best to inculcate all four of these things in our daily life. That's what we have to do. Okay, so we're going to have to set aside time only for number two and only for number one. Okay? Now, that's beside this. <laughs> do you notice that this is separate? This is just like food. You have to do it if, according to what he's teaching us. This point number two is that we just dedicate all of our time to worship. Only worship. Now, a lot of people can't do that. So now he goes to level three. If you can't do level two, now go to level three. Let's see what he says about that. al harat al-thalith, the third possible way, an tashtaghila bima tusilu bihi khayran ila al-muslimin. Beautiful. The third possible way. Some people don't have the natural uh, thing to just spend their time doing dhikr, praying, these things. But rather they're inclined to public service. Helping the Muslimin. That's what he's referring to here. He says, The third possible way is to spend your time in working on something that will bring benefit to Muslims. وَتُدْخِلُ مِنْهُ سُرُورًا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ so he says, and by which you may bring or will bring happiness to the hearts of believers or by which you make it easier for the righteous to accomplish works. So what he's referring to here is doing anything to facilitate those people who want to establish the worship of Allah or those people busy in part one. Those people who are busy doing the first thing, help them. Those people who are busy doing the second thing, help them. Cleaning the masjid. Financially supporting the masjid. Something to facilitate the first two things. Now, public service fits in too. But we want to facilitate those doing righteous things. We don't want to facilitate those going against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why here, uh, Imam Ghazali rahimahullah ta'ala is saying those things that help the Muslim first and foremost. Help the Muslim. Help the ch Muslim children. In any way, public service helping them and doing the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the third level. What is he doing for us? He's saying to you, there's no excuse. There's no excuse for you to lag back in doing good for Allah. If you're academically uh, geared, spend your time in number one. If you're not at that level, two. Spend your time worshiping. Some people, they don't have that. They can't just, you know, they don't have that. Go to level three. Go to level three. And do what? Spend your time helping the Muslims as much as you can. However you can. Okay. Now we are in a different geographical situation. We are in a non-Muslim country. Yeah. So we, we, always the word Muslim has been used all the time. Now yeah. there are some people like we can do the voluntary work. Yeah, we should. Senior citizens. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, no. Uh, obviously he's in a Muslim country right. and Muslim That's time. Saying, so yeah, so we should try to help as whoever, and, mankind. Yeah, mankind. Mankind. Okay. So, uh, for example, serving the, the jurists. Uh, he says... And the true Sufis or the men of religion taking care of their errands. So you're helping people of religion. You're helping them. And this one he's, he's, he's actually highlighting helping Muslims though. Because by helping them you're helping establish the deen. You're helping establish the deen. Um, striving, uh, striving to bring food to the poor and needy like you just said. There you go. Striving to help bring food to the poor and needy. Making a habit of visiting the sick. And escorting 
funerals, going with the janazah, if a few brothers or sisters learn the rulings of washing the body. And now they say, brother, sisters, whenever there's an issue of washing the bodies, we're ready. We're ready for this. So this is a service for the community. That's what he's saying. Do you, do you see why this book is so ideal for us? He's showing you exactly how to gain the pleasure of Allah, whatever uh, natural disposition you may have. All of these, فَكُلُّ ذَلِكَ أَفْضَلُ مِنَ النَّوَافِلِ He says doing all of this is better than, uh, than, than just doing extra prayers. All of these things are better than just doing extra deeds. Why? Because those extra deeds only are beneficial for you. But when you do these actions, you're benefiting the entire community. You're benefiting the entire society. فَإِنَّ هَذِهِ عِبَادَاتٌ وَفِيهَا رِفْقٌ بِالْمُسْلِمِينَ All of these are superior to voluntary acts because they are forms of worship and they involve kindness to Muslimin. Now, he goes to the next person, which is 99% of people today. He says, الْحَالَةُ الرَّابِيَةُ Earning a living and protecting your religion. Look at how beautiful Islam is. This is a Muslim's life. If you're a Muslim, he's going to tell you, you need to be in one of these four groups. That's it. You have to find which group is yours, or we take from each group. But there's no fifth group. Let's look at this one. But you're wrong, sir. You say 99% of us. I think 100% of us are in this group. Yeah, but... You it also says protecting your religion. Yeah, I know. Exactly. We'll get to that. Al-Halat al-Rabiya. The fourth state is that Allah taqwa ala dhalika Lacking the strength for these things. If you can't do the first four things, he's saying, now come down to the fourth level. Washtagalta bihajatika iktisaban ala nafsika ala iyalika You occupy yourself with your own needs, earning a living to take care of yourself and your family. You do this in such a way that Muslims are safe from your tongue and your hand, and your religion is safe. And he says, and your religion is safe because you would not be committing sins. So, so remember, he's saying busy yourself, working, taking care of your family, but at the same time, you're not hurting any person and you're not committing any sin. This is the fourth level. In this way, you will reach the levels of the people of the right side. Washabul yamini ma ashabul yamin. Right? And the people of the right. What is the first group? Washabul. Wasabikun as sabikun. The forefronters, the one who are foremost on Yom al Qiyamah. We all understand there will be three groups on Yom al Qiyamah. As sabikun as sabikun. Ulaik al muqarrabun. They will be the closest to Allah. The group of sabikun, foremost. And then washab al yamini, mashab al yamin. Ashab al yamin will be on the right side. These are people of paradise also. But lower than the people of Sabiqun. Washab al shimal will be the third group. And these are the people of hell. So now, what is he saying here? If we do this, the fourth level, we work, we provide for our family, we cause no hardship to anyone, and we don't commit sins, you will be of the Ashab al-Yameen. He's finding a way for everyone. He's finding a way for everyone. No matter what you may be. However your situation may be. So what does he say? In this way, absolutely beautiful. In this way you will reach the levels of the people of the right. Even if you cannot be of those who rise to the level of the forerunners. إِلَّمْ تَكُنْ مِنْ أَحْلِ التَّرَقِّ إِلَى Maqamat is sabiqeen, even if you do not reach the level of the sabiqeen. 
There it is, right there. And this is the lowest of the levels of religion, for below it are the grazings. Now he's going to explain this one too. He goes, For below it are the grazing grounds of devils. If you're doing any less than this, you're with the group of shayateen. You're not doing what a Muslim is supposed to do. Which, subhanAllah, which you would enter as a, uh, as a result of working. May Allah protect us in that which ruins your religion or by hurting one of the slaves of Allah. This is the level of those who are destroyed. So beware of being in this level. وَهَذِي أَقَلِّ الدَّرَجَاتِ فِي مَقَامَاتِ الدِّينِ وَمَا بَعْدَهَا فَهِيَ مِنْ مَرَاتِ الشَّيَاطِينِ وَذَارِكَ بِأَنْ تَشْتَغِلْ وَالْعِيَاضُ بِاللَّهِ بِمَا يَهْدِمُ دِينَكَ That you get busy doing that thing which destroys your deen. You're busy doing something which is totally destroying your deen. أَوْ تُؤْذِي أَبْدًا مِنْ عِبَادِ اللَّهِ تعالى Or you're hurting one of the slaves of Allah. Not Muslims, anyone. عِبَاد this is the level of those who have, are destroyed. And beware not to be of this group. How beautiful is a Muslim's life? How beautiful is a Muslim's life? That the lowest level of the Muslim is that he does what tends to his own affairs and doesn't harm anyone around him. If all of us could at least get up to this level then the whole world would want to become Muslim. Just think of this last level, that you protect your deen, you take care of your family, and you don't hurt anyone. Okay, like we, you said, not 99%, but the majority of people... Should be in, in this in one, group. if not l lower. I have, I have a couple of people in my, in my mind that i struggling with them. They fall into the category except they don't pray a single prayer. They don't pray a Juma prayer. They so don't they pray won't be in this category, prayer, brother. They don't do anything. They're not brother, they're not in this category. They're not yeah. protecting their religion. Yeah. Uh, brother, you missed something. It says you occupy yourself with your own needs. One second. Earning a living, taking care of yourself and your family. He does that. Okay. Yeah. Muslims are safe from your hand and your tongue and your religion is safe. Religion. That's yeah. it. Done. They are very nice, they are very no, no, no. pious, they are very complete. kind. You're missing. Your religion is not safe. 100% complete or no solution? Yes. That's the condition. So not majority. You have to do all that. Yeah. I prefer one person give me the answer. Yeah, I I'm sorry. Two, I, 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 even though I have a two ears, but I cannot hear two people at the same time. Uh, yes. I got you, I, I got you. Okay. Listen, uh, Brother Iqbal Marfani. I've been struggling with him, but this guy, but for this people for 25 years. Yeah. And sometimes I feel, other than praying, they are better than me. No, they're not. No, no. I'm just saying it's, it's because they are... Listen, they are one does fine. not negate the other. Honest. Listen. They are very, you know, uh, soft-spoken. They never uh, backbite. They never say anything negative about anybody. Yes. All these things. Yes, but listen. Except listen, no prayer, listen, listen, no listen. Car, no I understand. Fashion. Okay. <laughs> Can I go now? Yeah. Thank you. That is all fine. Yeah. They have shown the best adab with the creation. But that person has forgot his creator. He has not fulfilled the right of the one who created him, but yet he's fulfilling the right of the entire creation. He's deceived. Because the one who gave him everything, the one who blessed him with every blessing, is the one who deserves most of his attention. But yet he doesn't fulfill the right to that primary being. The right which Allah says, give me this right. So unfortunately, unfortunately, we need to bring both things in our life. Imam Ghazali is saying here, he's protecting his religion. He's busy earning for his family. He's busy uh, uh, protecting his family, not harming anyone. But at the same time, he's doing what? He's protecting his religion. That person has neglected the part of protecting his religion. Yes, he's helping many people. But he forgot the primary one. So although he may be better than you in some aspects, 
there are other aspects where you need to make him better at. The one doesn't affect the other. Yes, he's good. Those things are good. We're not going to neglect the fact that he does all of those things. But he still will be questioned for not establishing the prayer, giving Allah his right. Does that make sense? Okay. So, I'm struggling. Should I, if I, sometimes I like to get more connected so I can make him, you know, sway this way. Yes. But most of the time, I feel like I shouldn't even bother because it's been... No, try your best, inshallah. So I, I, you know, try your best, inshallah. Yeah. Let's go forward, inshallah. There's, it's getting a lot better now, inshallah. He says, No, wa'alam anna al-abda fi haqi dinihi ala thalathati darajatin. He says, No, that in relation to his religion, that a servant is one of three levels. Listen to this closely. He's saying every person in relation to their religion is in one of three levels. Number one, Imma Salim. One is a safe person. Number two, one who profits. And number three, one who is a loser. Complete loser. Number one is who? فَهُوَ الْمُقْتَصِرُ عَلَىٰ أَدَاءِ الْفَرِيضَ فَرَائِذْ وَتَرْكِ الْمَعَاسِ the Salim one, the safe one, is the one who does what is obligatory, only, nothing extra, and stays away from sins. He doesn't do extra nafal, he doesn't do extra sadaqah, he doesn't do extra psalm, he does what's fard, but he doesn't do sins. This person is safe. He's safe. Number two is the rabih, the one with profit. He says, وَهُوَ الْمُتَطَوِّعِ بِقُرُبَاتِ وَالنَّوَافِلِ This is the one who, perf who voluntarily performs good deeds and voluntary acts. He does the obligatory, but now he's doing more. Number three, هُوَ الْخَاسِرِ The loser. وَهُوَ الْمُقْتَصِرُ عَنِ اللَّوَازِمِ This is one who falls short in his performance of the obligatory acts. This person is in the third category. I think we just answered your question. He's in the third category, unfortunately. Because he's not even doing what's compulsory on him as a Muslim. فَإِن لَمْ تَقْدِرْ أَن تَكُونَ رَابِحًا Imam Ghazali, look what he says to us. Therefore, if you cannot be of the second category, the, those who gain profit, then at least put your efforts into being among the safe people. فَاجْتَهِدْ أَن تَكُونَ سَالِمًا وَإِيَّاكَ And beware. وَإِيَّاكَ ثُمَّ إِيَّاكَ Be careful, be careful. أَن تَكُونَ خَاسِرًا Do not be of the losers. Now, listen to this. وَالْعَبْدُ فِي حَقِّ سَائِرِ الْعِبَادِ لَهُ ثَلَاثُ دَرَجَاتِ Now, in relation to other people, we are in three categories. Imam Ghazali is putting it in plain English. Very clear for you to classify yourself. That am I doing what's obligatory? Yes or no? That's it. So now next thing. Now what about our relationship with other people? Look what he says here. In terms of his relationship with his fellows, a servant is uh, at one of three levels. Number one, الْأُولَى أَنْ يَنْزِلَ فِي حَقِّهِمْ مَنْزِلَةَ الْكِرَامِ الْبَرَرَ مِنَ الْمَ When you read how he explains it, absolutely amazing. It's very vivid. Number one, the highest. That he acts with them as a, as the reverent and noble angels do. The way you treat others is as the angels treat people. This is by striving to help them with their needs out of kindness to them and by bringing ha happiness to their hearts. So the highest level is angelic. You are like angels almost. That you're only striving to do good for everyone around you and help them in their needs. وَالثَّانِي أَنْ يَنْزِلَ مَنْزِلَ الْبَهَائِمِ The middle, that he be with them as, as animals. 
or an inanimate object would be. He may not bring them good, but he's, he does not harm them either. He calls this level the levels of animals. He's not benefiting the other animals, but he's not harming them either. But he's calling this person at the level of animals. He's relating it to animals because many animals are such that they don't harm the other goats, but they don't benefit the other goats either. They're just part of the herd. Number four. Number three. The lowest that he be with them as scorpions, serpents, or wild beasts would be. No one hopes from him, good from him, and evil is feared from him. This is what we have to be careful. If we are that person that when we walk in, everyone's scared of what commotion I'm going to cause. How am I going to bother someone? Now we've become a, one of those serpents. People are worried about my evil. Okay, I think I'm good, but now everyone's worried about my evil now. How can I be one where no one is scared of my evil? This is what he's saying here. Three levels. One level, the highest. You're only striving to give everyone beautiful things, nice things, benefit them. Second level, you're like an animal. You don't harm them, you don't benefit. You come in the masjid, you pray, you leave. I didn't harm you, you didn't harm me. That's it. The worst level, you come in and now you're hurting people. He's, he's saying these people are like scorpions, serpents, and wild beasts. Because they're preying on people. They're preying on things. And they're injecting their poison here and there into the community. Did you hear about that, sister? She did this and this and this. Injecting the poison. Brother, did you hear what he was doing? Injecting poison into the society. As scorpions and snakes do. So it, this is why we're reading this. Because Imam Ghazali is making you see who you are. Like, where am I? That's what we have to look. Where am I at? When I walk into my work, when I walk into the masjid, where am I? That's my relationship with people. Now, how am I with Allah? Am I in which category of the first three? Salim, Rabi, Khasir. Where am I? Let's go forward. Therefore, if you cannot, فَإِلَّمْ تَقْدِرْ عَلَىٰ أَن تَلْتَحِقَ بِأُفُقِ الْمَلَائِكَةِ He says, okay, so therefore, if you cannot reach the horizons of the angels, then beware of falling below the level of animals. He doesn't say to the level. He says below the level. You get what he's saying? Mm -hmm. Don't go below that. That's the bare minimum. That you're not hurting anyone and you're not benefiting anyone. The animals. That's the lowest. But don't go below that. And inanimate objects down to the level of scorpions and snakes. If you are content for yourself to come down from the highest of levels, do not occupy for yourself do not accept for yourself to be hurled down to the lowest of low. For hopefully you will be saved by doing just enough, neither achieving mu much or losing all. See what he's saying? At least if you go to that level, hopefully you'll get saved because you're not going beyond, but you're not falling short. You're not falling short. He's not done. He's not done. He's going to hit us more. Turn the page. There's more. Therefore, therefore, فَعَلَيْكَ فِي بَيَادِ نِحَارِكَ أَلَّا تَشْتَغِلَ إِلَّا بِمَا يَنْفَوْكَ فِي مَعَادِكَ وَمَعَاشِكَ الَّذِي لَا يَسْتَغْنِي عَنِ الْإِسْتِنَعَانَةِ بِهِ عَلَى مَعَادِكَ He goes, therefore, by the light of your day, you should occupy yourself only with what benefits you in your afterlife and with gaining those provisions in this life which you cannot dispense with to assist you towards your afterlife. So what is he saying here? Use your day to get ready for your afterlife but at the same time get those things which you need for this life. 
So that's how your day should be. Now, look at this. فَإِنْ عَجَزْتَ عَنِ الْقِيَامِ بِحَقِّ دِينِكَ مَعَ مُخَالِتَةِ النَّاسِ Listen to this. Re remember, he just told us about three levels of people when they deal with other people. He's talking to us now about that. Listen to this. If you cannot manage to fulfill the rights of your religion while associating with people and you cannot remain safe, then solitude is better for you. Okay, if, if you can't be nice around people, stay by yourself. It's better for you. Not for them only, for you. Because the more you cause harm to them, the more you're going to answer to Allah for that harm you caused them. So he's saying, brother, sister, if you cannot uh, fulfill the rights of people around you, then solitude. Go be alone. For you it's okay to be alone. You should adopt solitude, for in it is safety. For who? For you and other people too. Listen to this. If in your solitude, <laughs> look what he's, if in your solitude, if when you're alone, devilish insinuations draw you to what is displeasing to Allah, if while you're alone, you keep getting these shaitani thoughts, these bad waswas, and these bad inclinations to do evil things while you're alone, and you cannot uh, and you cannot root them out with the duties of worship, then go to sleep. <laughs> Imam Ghazali does not uh, quote things. He's telling you straight up. If you're awake by yourself and you're still getting bad thoughts and Salah doesn't help you, Quran doesn't help you, go to sleep. Just go to sleep. Because at least you're not getting sins. Go to sleep. It's more beneficial for you. The more you stay up, the more sins you're doing. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. At least you're not sinning. <laughs> Subhanallah. <laughs> that is the best state for you and for us. That is the best state for you and for us. Where were we? I'm sorry. When we are unable... To gain any spoils of battle, we are at least content with safety in defeat. But let me read the Arabic for that. فَهَذَا أَحْسَنَ أَحْوَالِكَ وَأَحْوَالِنَا إِذَا عَجَزْنَا عَنِ الْغَنِيمَةِ فَرَذِينَا بِالسَّلَامَةِ فِي الْهَزِيمَةِ Ah, yes. He's saying, normally when you win a war, you get the spoils of war you get benefits so those people who can busy their free time with free time outside of work with dhikr quran getting closer to allah they're getting a lot of ghanima benefit he's saying but those who don't get benefit at least if we are defeated but have security we'll take that we'll take that too if the enemy's over us but we have security we'll take that too but that's lower. That's why he's saying just go to sleep. But how sorry is the state? How sorry is the state of the one who can only save his religion by making his life non-functional? I, 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 I'm sorry, but it needs no explanation. You just have to read this sentence like five times. And it should sink into your heart. Literally. He says, But how sorry is the state of the one who can only save his religion by making his life non-functional. As soon as he starts to deal with people, he causes them taklif. As soon as he walks into the masjid, everyone's saying, Watch out. Stay away from this guy's shar. This guy is better for him to pick solitude. Don't come to the masjid. Because all you're going to do is cause taklif to people. Or if you're going to come to the masjid, then be like the animal who comes in, doesn't bother no one, but doesn't benefit no one. He comes, he leaves. He comes, he leaves. But even if you're by yourself 
and you still have shaitan bothering you, go to sleep. Go to sleep. But how bad is the one who can only save his religion by being unfunctional in society? The best is the one who's most in society and protects his religion. But protects it, not gives up the religion. Protects his religion while being in society. After all, after all, sleep is the brother of death. It is to suspend progress in life and join company with inanimate things. Heed this. He's saying a new sentence. Heed this. Listen. Hold on to this. Hold on to this. And you will be divinely guided, inshallah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. Brothers and sisters, please read this chapter a few times. By yourself. And contemplate. Contemplate where you stand. Don't look at anyone else. Don't look at no one else. Spouse, kids, no one. Look at yourself. Where do you stand? Read this chapter three times and it will be enough inshallah. And please hold on to this inshallah. May Allah give us tawfiq to make this a reality.